It's not always easy getting to the top. Enjoy the remarkable tale of probably tennis greatest player while you sit back and unwind. Thank you for returning old subscribers. Please remember to use the like button, and if you're a new viewer, be sure to subscribe so you can see more enthralling content. Roger Federer was born in Basel, Switzerland, on the 8th of August 1981. His father, Robert Federer, is from Bernac St. Gallen and his mother, Lynette Federer, is from South Africa. Therefore, he holds Swiss citizenship and South African citizenship. He grew up in Bursfelden, Rehen and then Munchenstein, close to the German and French border. Because of this, he speaks Swiss German, Standard German, English and French fluently. He played his first junior match in a grade 2 tournament in Switzerland at the age of 14. He completed his junior career, winning four ITF junior singles in his career, including the prestigious Orange Bowl. By the end of 1998, he was ranked number one in the junior world ranking for singles and number seven in the ranking for seniors. His main accomplishment as a junior tennis player was winning both the doubles and singles titles at the 1998 Wimbledon. He made his ATP debut at the 1998 Swiss Open Gestad in his hometown, though he lost in the tournament's first round. Later that year, he went on to win his first ATP match in Toulouse, France. He went on as a wild card to the Swiss 1998 indoors, where he lost in the first round to former world number one Andre Agassi. He was ranked in the top 100 for the first time in September 1999 and went on to start at the 1999 Marseille Open, where he defeated the defending champion of the 1998 French Open. A year later, he made it to his first career final at the 2000 Marseille Open, but he lost to fellow Swiss Marc Rosset. He won his first trophy at the 2001 Hopman Cup, representing his country alongside the then world number one Martina Hingis defeating American duo Monica Seles and Jan Michael Gamble in the finals. He won his first singles titles at the 2001 Milan Indoor Tournament, and later that year, he reached the Grand Slam quarterfinal for the first time, which he later lost to the then world number two and eventual finalist Alex Koretja. His progress to the semi-finals ranked him in the top 15 for the first time in his career. At the 2001 Wimbledon Championship, he defeated the four-time defending champions and all-time Grand Slam leader Pete Sampras in a five-set match to reach the quarterfinals, but he eventually lost the quarterfinals to English Tim Henman in a fourth-set tiebreaker. His first final at the Masters level was at the 2002 Miami Masters event, but he eventually lost to former number one Andre Agassi on the hard court. He went on to win his first Masters Series event at the 2002 Hamburg Masters event on clay over Murat Safin. This victory put him in the top 10 on the world ranking for the first time. He won his first double Masters event in Miami alongside Max Murney in 2003. Later in 2003, he made it to nine ATP Tour finals, winning seven and losing just two, and capped it with a year-end championship win over Andre Agassi. This victory saw him finish narrowly number two in the world, ranking behind Andy Roddick. The following year he continued his excellent performance, winning three Grand Slam singles titles, becoming the first person to do so since Mats Wielander in 1988. His victory over Murat Safin on the hard court at the 2004 Australian Open saw him move to the number one on the world ranking. He didn't stop winning. He continued his fine form by winning three ATP Masters events that same year. He failed to reach the first two finals of tournaments featured in 2005, however, bounced back by defeating Andy Roddick on the grass to win his third Wimbledon title and later defeat Andre Agassi in the U.S. Open Finals that year. The 2006 season was ranked Federer's best career season following his electrifying performance that year. According to Steven Tigner, chief editorial writer for Tennis.com, his performance that season was statistically the all-time second-best season during the Open era, behind Rod Laver's Grand Slam year of 1969. 
That year Roger won 12 singles titles and had a match record of 92-5 for that season, most wins since Ivan Lendy in 1982. He also did he reach 16 finals out of the 17 tournaments featured in that year. The following year he reached four Grand Slam finals but was only able to win just three. One of his wins included the Australian Opens, where he won without even dropping a set and defeated Fernando Gonzalez in the finals. His remarkable performance saw him become the first player in the 21st century to win a Grand Slam without dropping a set since Bjorn Borg at the 1980 French Open. His dominance was given a break by unknown young Djokovic that year when he lost in a final set tiebreaker. He avenged the defeat at the US Open Finals, where he faced Djokovic again in a close straight set match. He ended the year not dropping from the number one spot for all 52 weeks, and that saw him hold the number one for three consecutive seasons. His 2008 season was hampered by a series of injuries which saw him miss some part of the year. That year he only owned one Grand Slam title and was defeated in two finals by Rafael Nadal. Many people tagged one of his losses as the best tennis match in history. However, he went on to lose to Djokovic in the semi-finals of the Australian Open that year, a loss that ended his 10 consecutive final records. He later featured in the 2008 Beijing Olympics for his country and went ahead to win the gold medal in doubles alongside Stan Wawrinka, defeating the Bryan Brothers American team in the semi-finals and the Swedish duo of Simon Aspelin and Thomas Johansson in the finals. With injuries hampering his season, he dropped to number two at the end of that year. He entered the 2009 season with just one Grand Slam title behind Pete Sampras' 14 titles of all time. However, ending that season, he surpassed the record and won a men's record 15 Grand Slam singles titles at Wimbledon. The final was also a historic one, with him winning 16-14 in the fifth set and was tagged the longest Grand Slam final in history. As a result, he moved back to number one on the ranking, the fifth time he ended at the top of his career. Federer, however, for the first time in six years in 2010 after he failed to move beyond the last eight of the competition losing to Soderling that year at the French Open, following the disappointing outing, he hired Pete Sampras former coach Paul Anacone to get his game back on track, and he ended that season on strong from winning indoor titles in Stockholm Open, Swiss Indoor and the ATP Finals in London. That saw him finish in the top two for eight consecutive seasons. However, the following year wasn't as great as fans would expect. He lost in a straight set to Djokovic in the semi-finals, followed by a five-set loss again to the same Djokovic at the US Open, that loss saw him not winning any of the Grand Slam titles that year, and his performance saw him drop to number three on the ranking again. The following season he worked harder and regained the top spot. By doing so, he broke the Pete Sampras 286 weeks record on top of the list and also won an Olympic silver medal for his country, losing the gold medal to Murray. His season was again hampered by injuries which saw him drop from world number one to number six on the ranking. Following his recovery from injury, he announced Stefan Edberg as a co-coach with Severin Luthi to enable him to be back at his best. He bounced back the following season with a return to the number two on the ranking since May 2013. Despite his injury that year, he defeated Richard Gasquet to win the Davis Cup for his country for the first time. Injury problems continue hampering his season, which saw him publicly announce that he would be missing out on the 2016 Olympics and the remainder of the season to fully recover from his knee injury. The decision cost him so much that he finished the whole season without a title and also dropped outside the number 10 for the first time in 14 years. He returned from injury in the 2017 season and started well, winning the 2017 Australian Open with a defeat over Nadal, a win that saw him become the oldest player in a Grand Slam final since Ken Rosewall in 1974 and also win the 2017 Wimbledon Championship without dropping a set till he reached the finals. His awesome performance saw him moved back to number three on the ranking. He started the 2018 season by winning the Hopman Cup alongside Belinda Bensick, 
having previously won it with Martina Hingis in 2001. He won the Labour Cup, defending the team's Europe titles and returning to the number one spot. Following injury problems and setbacks, Roger didn't feature in the 2021 Wimbledon, which saw a dropped out of the top 50 in June 2022. A month later, he somehow became unranked for the first time since his professional debut. The injury problem forced him to announce his retirement from professional tennis in 2022, stating that the Labor Cup would be his final ATP event. His final match saw him partner with his longtime rival and friend Rafael Nadal who eventually lost to Jack Sock and Francis Tiafo. The match, however, marked his 1,750th match on tour. Off the field, Roger Federer is a highly respected man among his colleagues and fans for his athleticism and professionalism. In 2003 he founded the Roger Federer Foundation, which is aimed at helping children who don't have quality education in sport. Since 2004 he's been supporting his mother country, South Africa Swiss Charity Imbul, that's aimed at helping children connect to sport as well as social and health awareness. He auctioned his 2005 US Open racket to aid victims of Hurricane Katrina. He's contributed many philanthropic gestures during his playing and beyond. He's a great lover of football. He grew up supporting his local club Basel in Switzerland. Roger is happily married to former WTA player Miroslava Federer. It was reported that they both met while they were competing for their country at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. She retired in 2002 from professional tennis following a foot injury. They got married in 2009 and gave birth to their first set of identical twins, Myla Rose Federer and Charlene Riva Federer. Five years later, they gave birth to their twins, but this time they were boys, Lenny and Leo Federer. According to Yahoo Finance, his net worth is around $550 million, which shows he's well set up for retirement. In addition, in 2020, he was ranked among the top 10 list of the highest paid athletes in the world and first among athletes with $100 million in endorsement income in 2021. Thanks for staying glued all through the narration. Please don't forget to subscribe.